Hey friends, welcome back to the Crank and Boom podcast. One of the joys of my life is encouraging other women to take the leap into building their own businesses and fulfilling their potential towards being leaders of their own companies. I really believe that empowering other women makes the world better, safer, and stronger. According to a report by McKinsey Global Institute, advancing women's equality could add 12 trillion, I said trillion, to the global GDP by 2025. That is insane. This includes the economic growth generated by women starting and growing their own businesses. But not only that, teaching women to run their own businesses impacts them and their communities on a micro level. The confidence that can bloom when women are supported and recognized as leaders is astronomical. That said, women face unique challenges starting their entrepreneurial journey. Bias and prejudice can run rampant in workplaces and in all industries. In today's episode, we're going to touch on ways to meet these challenges head on and to begin to break the cycle of bias, discrimination, and prejudice. I hope that the mindset that I've cultivated and that helps me move forward will also help you when things get discouraging. We'll also talk about community and get tactical about opportunities you can take advantage of when you are a woman-owned business. I hope this episode will help make you feel less alone in your journey and also make you aware of how you can advocate for yourself and be more of an ally to the entrepreneurial women in your life who could use a little extra support. So let's get into it. So if you have met me in person, you will notice a few things about me. I am a woman, I am Asian, and I am quite short. I stand at a very tall, five feet tall. And when I was in elementary school, I was called short all the time, and I really didn't understand what people were talking about. I don't know why they kept calling me shorty. They would find other names, and they would just say, you're just so small. And so later in elementary school, I saw my mom in the grocery store. She's 4'11", so she is also a tiny lady. But I saw her in the grocery store, and then I saw another person come by her. And it suddenly hit me. I was like, oh, she's really small. And I never noticed that until I really saw it in that context with a average size other person next to her. But I tell this story because I think one of the reasons why I've been able to do the things I've been able to do in the way that I have is 100% because my mom has raised me in a way that all these barriers that If you look at me, you would see that I might be facing certain barriers because I'm a person of color, I'm short, I'm young, I am Asian, I am a woman. All these things that by statistics are things that are pieces of me that might potentially hold me back. And my mom has never spoken to me in a way or spoken about herself in a way that those things were ever a disadvantage. And so I didn't grow up in a place where I was ever told, oh, well, you look like this, or you're a girl, or you're this, and that means that you are at a disadvantage. I grew up with always the mentality, you work hard, you try to be the best that you can. And I think almost being oblivious to some of those other things has helped me be able to just work hard and do the best I could without thinking too much about these other factors that could be holding me back. And for me, almost being a little bit oblivious to that growing up was really helpful. But I think at the same time, even if you're trying to ignore those things or you try to not notice that these things happen, I think (laughs) over time you definitely see that, oh, I'm getting treated differently because of X, Y, and Z. And maybe it's because I'm short and maybe it's because I'm Thai. And especially as I was coming into the workplace as an adult, I came off as very young looking. People thought I was 12 when I was actually 22. As somebody, especially in the business world and in the business space, I find myself being the only in a lot of rooms. A lot of times the only person under 45, the only person who is a person of color, the only woman in the room. And I found that I it's easy to notice and it's something that I think about, but I also feel like 
as a representative of those categories and those check boxes, it is my duty to represent other people that look like me and are like me. And I feel like instead of feeling sad or mad or angry, that this is how the situation is. When I would walk into a room and no one would really take me very seriously. And, you know, even still as a woman, I'll walk into a room in a male dominated boardroom or male dominated meeting. And it, they're more likely to listen to my tall white husband than they are to me on certain topics because that's just how the world kind of works. But even when these things happen, sometimes it gets a little irritating and agitating, but at the same time, I'm not here to prove anything to anyone. I know what I'm capable of. I feel like I've been very blessed to have the opportunity to be at different tables in different rooms that maybe other people aren't in the room. And so what can I do? I can bring positivity, I can bring optimism, I can bring joy, I can bring perspective, I can bring all these things because of who I am. And just because I don't have whatever qualities that maybe some other people do, it doesn't disqualify me from being in the room. I think one of the best things that has helped me through different times where it has been difficult to feel like someone's treating me a certain way because of who I am and the way I look, I try to think about, am I in the right space? as well because if the people around me don't understand my worth and don't understand what I have to contribute then maybe I need to be in a different room or I need to have different people around me and so I have worked really hard to find people that support me and support what we do and see all the pieces of me and our team and see the advantages of that and see that it is our magic and our superpower. And I think when you can unleash that, then you are completely unstoppable. One of the lessons I've learned as an entrepreneur is celebrating. Taking time to intentionally honor your achievements and share them with others is a big part of what makes the whole journey worth it. And one of my favorite ways to do it is with food, of course. Gold Belly is our partner in how we deliver our ice cream to customers all over the U.S. so they can make their special moments even more special wherever they are. And whatever milestone you're celebrating with your friends and family, Gold Belly has just the thing. Whether you need Guy Fieri's trash can dessert nachos for dad's birthday or Martha Stewart's famous banana pudding for your sister's baby shower, Gold Belly can ship it right to your door and make your event even more special. So if you haven't taken advantage of Gold Belly's amazing offerings, now's the time. Run over to their website at goldbelly.com and make your celebration unforgettable. Tao here, popping in to share my excitement about one of my favorite companies in the whole world, Holly Hill & Co. If you are like me and are obsessed with food, especially local food, you will appreciate those special ties that happen around the table. Holly Hill & Co. believes, like I do, that food creates connection and community unlike anything else. That's why they take care to strengthen the ties across the generations between family, the farmer, and the land, all the way to the food that ends up on your table. You can experience exactly what this means at one of Holly Hill's nine unique Central Kentucky restaurants and through their beautiful emails. If you're in Kentucky, be sure to find the nearest location and get ready for an amazing experience with the most fantastic food. Holly Hill's co-founder is none other than my dear friend, James Beard-nominated chef Weta Michael, who's been a force on the Kentucky food scene for over 20 years. Learn more about their incredible food community by visiting hollyhillandco.com, where you'll find stories, recipes, how-tos, and even curated gifts. Again, that's hollyhillandco.com, and let them know that Tao from Crank and Boom sent you. So through the years, one thing that has really, really helped me in terms of support as a female entrepreneur is finding other female entrepreneurs, and especially for me, finding other female restaurant owners and other females who are in our industry. Traditionally, in the food industry, it's very male-dominated. And I actually can't watch a lot of those cooking shows because it, it brings back too many weird triggering <laughs> memories. But <laughs> I, I mostly just 
am so grateful to have a amazing circle of women business owners that are in our industry that completely understand what we go through. And we don't have a formal group, but we have had different events together. We have this one event called Feast that was created by Chef Wida Michael, who has been on this podcast and also is sponsoring this podcast. So yay, thank you to Wida and Holly Hill and Co., But she put together this amazing event called Feast, and it was in celebration of women chefs. And just getting women chefs in the room together and being able to find friendship in the different challenges that we face and just knowing that other people go through the same thing as you can just be so comforting. It's just a cool way to move through the world. And we are not an island, so finding your people and finding your village in this respect is going to be so, so helpful because you'll have those moments where you feel like you're the only one who is feeling like this. I think women are especially prone to having feelings of not being good enough and having a lot of imposter syndrome, which, as Gary Vee say, is a fancy word for insecurity, and feeling like you don't deserve this or you don't deserve success. So if you can find others in your community that you can get together, maybe it's having lunch once a month, maybe it's even just a Zoom meeting. Within our community, we also have other folks that have created a female entrepreneur group and they meet once a month and they get together. The organizer will bring in a speaker. That's a very cool group that gets together. And then we also have an organization called Women Leading Kentucky that is amazing. They put on a lot of different events And they have women business folks coming in and talking all the time, speaking events, networking events. And so definitely look for those sorts of organizations within your community because those can be a great resource for getting support, finding friends, and also finding funding and other means that will be very geared towards women-owned businesses specifically. There is a quote that I always try to post around July 4th. It says, when someone opens the door for you, hold the door open for the person behind you. And I believe in that very deeply, in that I've been so lucky to have had so many people who have believed in me and mentors and other people who have given me opportunities to be a leader within our community. I'm going to take that chance and take that opportunity and take the most out of it and do the most with that opportunity by seeing how I can open doors for other people. And that means not just me being at the table, but how can I expand the table or how can I open the door for someone else to come to the table once my time is done so that we can have lots and lots of other perspectives. And I feel like I have done that, and that's something that I'm definitely very, very proud of. One of the main reasons that I really wanted to do this podcast was to be a female voice in this business world that is generally very male-dominated. I wanted to be a voice for the small business owner and the mom and the family person who is just trying to make a living in a sense of, I want to do something that is meaningful. I want to live a life where I'm finding joy in what I do in my work, but my work also supports the life that I want to live. And I just want to encourage you to find that joy. I've worked really hard to put white space and margin into my life and be really intentional about it because I don't have to say yes to every community thing. I don't have to say yes in appearing in this community video. I don't have to say yes to this meeting because someone wants to pick my brain. So finding ways to gracefully say no and not apologizing for it is the greatest gift I think that you can give yourself. But if I take care of myself and I do the things that bring me joy and I find that happiness, that happiness and that joy is gonna radiate to everybody around me. All right, Tao's takeaways from this week's episode. Number one, frame your thinking instead of the qualities that you have being a disadvantage for you, think of your unique qualities as your absolute superpower because every human being on this earth is unique. And if you can tap into those things that make you unique and use those as your superpower, then you will be unstoppable. Number two, 
Find other women business owners to add to your village, to add to your community that you can find that are like-minded, who are in similar situations as you. For me, finding other business owners that have young kids has been life-giving because sometimes when you're thick of trying to raise little humans, you'd think you're going completely bonkers, but having friends who understand what you're going through is going to save the day. And then number three, learn how to say no in a clear and nice way, and then don't apologize for it. So if you can figure that out and build that muscle, it's gonna feel real hard at first and real weird, but if you can learn that muscle, it just makes your life so much easier. So we've had a whole lot of thoughts during this episode, and I think it's so important to talk about what are the very unique aspects of being a woman-owned business. I am so proud that Crank and Boom is usually about 70% women, and then also about that same number is leadership. Our leadership team is women-run for the most part. And I'm just so proud of that because we have an amazing group of ladies that help run our company and are building Crank and Boom to be what it is. They have done more for this company to make it what it is now than I ever could have dreamed of and more than anything I could do on my own. And so it just proves to you if we as women can come together, what we can do together, not as competitors, but as collaborators and as community and as a sisterhood of ladies who will conquer the world. So did you know that your business can actually get certified as a women-owned business? And if you are a certified women-owned business, you can actually get special opportunities for funding, loans, contracts. We are going to link a bunch of resources for you in the show notes. So go check it out and see if by getting certified, that will be something that will help your business. Thank you so much for listening to the Crank and Boom podcast. If you want business advice and tactics like this every week, click that follow button wherever you listen to your podcast so you never miss an episode with us. Also, if you like what you heard today, it would mean so very much to me if you would leave us a review. That helps other people find us. And I would also love to hear more about what topics you'd like for us to dive into on the show. I can't wait to meet you here again soon. Until next time. Peace. This is a production of Four Eyes Media.